Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Jerry Garcia. Jerome John Garcia was an American singer, songwriter, and guitarist, best known for his work as the lead guitarist and as a vocalist with the band The Grateful Dead, which came to prominence during the counterculture era in the 1960s. Although he disavowed the role, Garcia was viewed by many as the leader or spokesman of the group. One of its founders, Garcia performed with the Grateful Dead for their entire 30-year career. Garcia also founded and participated in a variety of side projects, including the Saunders Garcia Band, the Derry Garcia Band, Olden in the Way, the Garcia, Grisman Acoustic Duo, Legion of Mary, and the John Dawson and David Nelson. He also released several solo albums, and contributed to a number of albums by other artists over the years as a session musician. He was well known for his distinctive guitar playing, and was ranked 13th in Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Guitarists of All Time cover story. Later in life, Garcia was sometimes ill because of his diabetes, and in 1986 went into a diabetic coma that nearly cost him his life. Although his overall health improved somewhat after that, he also struggled with heroin and cocaine addictions, and was staying in a California drug rehabilitation facility. When he died of a heart attack in August 1995 at the age of 53. Childhood and Early Life Jerry Garcia's ancestors on his father's side were from Galicia in northwest Spain. His mother's ancestors were Irish and Swedish. He was born in the Excelsior district of San Francisco, California, on August 1, 1942, to Jose Ramon, Joe, Garcia and Ruth Marie, Bobby, Garcia, who was herself born in San Francisco. His parents named him after composer Jerome Kern. Jerome John was their second child, preceded by Clifford Ramon, Tiff, who was born in 1937. Shortly before Clifford's birth, their father and a partner leased a building in downtown San Francisco and turned it into a bar. Partly in response to Jose being blackballed from a musician's union for moonlighting, Garcia was influenced by music at an early age, taking piano lessons for much of his childhood. His father was a retired professional musician and his mother enjoyed playing the piano. His father's extended family, who had emigrated from Spain in 1919, would often sing during reunions. Garcia experienced several tragedies during his youth. At age four, while the family was vacationing in the Santa Cruz Mountains, two-thirds of Garcia's right middle finger was accidentally cut off. Garcia and his brother Tiff were chopping wood. Jerry steadied a piece of wood with his finger, but Tiff miscalculated and the axe severed most of Jerry's middle finger. After his mother wrapped his hand in a towel, Garcia's father drove him over 30 miles to the nearest hospital. A few weeks later, Garcia, who had not looked at his finger since the accident, was surprised to discover most of it missing. When the bandage he was wearing came off during a bath, Garcia later confided that he often used it to his advantage in his youth, showing it off to other children in his neighborhood. Less than a year after he lost most of his finger, his father died, vacationing with his family near Arcata in Northern California in 1947. Garcia's father went fly fishing in the Trinity River, part of the Six Rivers National Forest. Not long after entering the river, Garcia's father slipped on a rock, lost his balance, and was swept away by the river's rapids. He drowned before other fishermen could reach him. Although Garcia claimed he saw his father fall into the river, Dennis McNally, Author of the book A Long Strange Trip, The Inside Story of the Grateful Dead, 
argues Garcia formed the memory after hearing others repeat the story. Blair Jackson, who wrote Garcia, An American Life, lends weight to McNally's claim. Jackson's evidence, a local newspaper article describing Jose's death failed to mention Garcia was present when his father died. Following the accident, Garcia's mother took over her husband's bar, buying out his partner for full ownership. As a result, Ruth Garcia began working full-time, sending Jerry and his brother to live nearby with her parents, Tilly and William Clifford. During the five-year period in which he lived with his grandparents, Garcia enjoyed a large amount of autonomy and attended Monroe School, the local elementary school. At the school, Garcia was greatly encouraged in his artistic abilities by his third-grade teacher, through her. He discovered that, being a creative person was a viable possibility in life. According to Garcia, it was around this time that he was opened up to country and to bluegrass by his grandmother, whom he recalled enjoyed listening to the Grand Ole Opre. His elder brother, Clifford, however, staunchly believed the contrary, insisting that Garcia was fantasizing all that should be too Opry, but she didn't listen to it on the radio. It was at this point that Garcia started playing the banjo, his first stringed instrument. In 1953, Garcia's mother married Wally Matusevich. Subsequently, Garcia and his brother moved back home with their mother and new stepfather. However, due to the roughneck reputation of their neighborhood at the time, the Excelsior District, Garcia's mother moved their family to Menlo Park. During their stay in Menlo Park, Garcia became acquainted with racism and antisemitism, things he disliked intensely. The same year, Garcia was also introduced to rock and roll and rhythm and blues by his brother, and enjoyed listening to the likes of Ray Charles, John Lee Hooker, B.B. King, Hank Ballard, and later, Chuck Berry. Clifford often memorized the vocals for his favorite songs and would then make Garcia learn the harmony parts, a move to which Garcia later attributed much of his early ear training. In mid-1957, Garcia began smoking cigarettes and was introduced to marijuana. Garcia would later reminisce about the first time he smoked marijuana, me and a friend of mine went up into the hills with two joints, the San Francisco foothills and smoked these joints and just got so high and laughed and roared, and went skipping down the streets doing funny things and just having a hell of a time. During this time, Garcia also studied at what is now the San Francisco Art Institute. The teacher there was Wally Herdrick, an artist who came to prominence during the 1960s. During the classes, he often encouraged Garcia in his drawing and painting skills. Hedrick also introduced Garcia to the fiction of Jack Kerouac, whom Garcia later cited as a major influence. In June of the same year, Garcia graduated from the local Menlo Oaks School. He then moved with his family back to San Francisco, where they lived in an apartment above the newly built bar, the old one having previously been torn down to make way for a freeway entrance. Two months later, on Garcia's 15th birthday, his mother bought an accordion for him. To his great disappointment, Garcia had long been captivated by many rhythm and blues artists, especially Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley. His one wish at this point was to have an electric guitar. After some pleading, his mother exchanged the accordion for a Dan Electro with a small amplifier at a local pawn shop. Garcia's stepfather, who was somewhat proficient with instruments, helped tune his guitar to an unusual open tuning. After a short stint at Denman Junior High School, Garcia attended 10th grade at Balboa High School in 1958, where he often got into trouble for skipping classes and fighting. Consequently, in 1959, 
Garcia's mother again moved the family to get Garcia to stay out of trouble, this time to Casadero, a small town in Sonoma County, 90 miles north of San Francisco. This turn of events did not sit well with Garcia. To get to Annerley High School, the nearest school, he had to travel by bus 30 miles to Sebastopol, a move which only made him more unhappy. Garcia did, however, join a band at his school known as the Chords. After performing and winning a contest, the band's reward was recording a song, they chose, Raunchy by Bill Justice. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.